Okay, um, we'll continue to talk about God's grace and law related to the fruits of salvation. Uh, the reason, the reason why I talk about this is because in some of the assignments uh, of the pastors that um, it seems that it's hard for you to find God's grace to motivate people um, in their Christian life. So I'm showing you the fruits of salvation. And so these are the uh, regular uh, life of the Christian, you know, of the Christian, the, what they do in the Christian life. And how do we motivate people to obey God in these areas? Okay. And um, okay, these are the fruits of salvation that in the Bible it listed this, that uh, when we are saved, we're not saved by doing good works. But when we are saved, then we'll have these good works flowing out because the Holy Spirit lives in us. And the first fruit is that we'll continue to repent of our sins and turn away from our sins. And we continue to trust in Jesus as Savior and Master. And um, so a Christian will continue to be sorry for the sins and continue to trust in Jesus as the Savior. Okay, now please tell me um, that you can see me. Okay, so they will continue to repent of their sins and continue to trust in Jesus as, as the Savior. And also, um, they will continue to have a close relationship with God. So if a Christian says he's saved, he believes in Jesus, but he doesn't um, continue to have a uh, living relationship with God. He doesn't abide in Christ. and uh, He doesn't have a living relationship with Christ. Then it's questionable whether he is born again or not. If he doesn't uh, pray to God and he doesn't respond to the move of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit moves him to follow, to obey God. And also to love God with all our hearts and to obey Him and to serve Him. Now, these first two are related to salvation. That means when a person is saved, then uh, he would, uh, when a person is saved, he repents of his sin and trusts in Jesus as his Savior, and then he'll continue to do that. And then related to relationship with God, that he will continue to uh, have a close relationship with God, pray to God, read the Bible, and, and respond to God's, voice in the hearts and then to love God and then to uh, these are related to relationship with God and related to good works what we do uh, we obey God and serve God so the Bible does tell us that uh, as born again Christians that we should have these fruits and if a person doesn't have these fruits that means there is something wrong with his Christian life that uh, he is not showing the work of God in his life. Now, last time we talked about that we continue to repent of our sins, and this second part of the six points are continue to trust in Jesus as Savior and Master. In John 1.12, it says that, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. And uh, so, this verse says that as many as received him. Okay, those who received Jesus, uh, to them he gave the rights to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So here ex explain what does it mean by believing in Jesus. Believing in Jesus is receiving Jesus. <clears throat> as our Savior and as our Lord, that we receive Him <clears throat> to enter our hearts, that we don't just believe in Him. Uh, it's not just an uh, action of, uh, of the heart, but it's the action of the whole person that will receive Him into our life. It's not just a thought. It's the action of the heart and the action of the whole life that will receive Him. And then, uh, last time I talked about the three colors I used. 
uh, for the red color, it means it's the grace of God, what God does for us. Uh, and then obedience is what we do. Now here is that He'll give us the become the right to become children of God. That is the grace, okay? And actually, as many as received Him, this is also obedience, okay? Those who received Him, obedience, and then He gave them the rights to become children of God to those who believe in His name. So, uh, now, many Bible verses has promises, has the grace of God that uh, that tell us that God is responding to us. He's blessing us. Actually, it's Him who blesses us first. And then when we respond to Him, he, for sure he'll, he'll be pleased with us and He'll bless us. So for those who receive Him and believe in His name, that He will give them the rights. So His action, His grace. God will always pour His grace upon His people. Whatever we do, that is following His will, He will pour His grace. And that is how we motivate people. The moment we receive Jesus as our Savior, He will pour the blessing to us that He will receive us as His children. And uh, so believing in Jesus is not just a head activity. It involves receiving Jesus into our lives as Savior and Master of our Lord. Receiving Jesus as the Master of our life means letting Him take control of our lives. Then God will give us the right to become children of God. So we let Jesus come into our life and be our Savior and as our Lord. And then He gives us the right to become children of God. So we, uh, this, so we motivate people uh, to... Uh, remember I talked about the six points that we motivate people to repent of the sins and turn away from the sins and trust in Jesus as a Savior and have a close relationship with God and love God and obey God and serve God. And in each of these points, we can give them the motivation from God's grace. We repent of our sins because then God is very pleased with us and a whole heaven will rejoice over us. And He'll give us the blessings, the forgiveness of sin, and He give us the right to become children of God. And then when we continue to trust in Jesus as our Savior and as our Master, and then He is pleased with us and He continues to give us the right to be His children. So, uh, when we motivate people to trust in Jesus, we can tell them how God will respond and how God will bless us. When we repent, God is very happy and for sure He will bless us with His spiritual life and His blessings and His strength and the whole heaven will rejoice. And then when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, then He'll receive us to be His children. Okay, and then... Um, And then have a close relationship with God. And also, uh, now this is the third point now, okay? We go to the third point now, have a close relationship with God. How do we motivate people to pray to God, to read the Bible, to respond to God? Oh, here it's another verse, uh, sorry. Uh, this second point, to receive Jesus as our Master, Savior and Master, this is another verse that, that uh, this is a warning, okay? So we have, God's grace and obedience and warning. Obedience is also the law. The warning is also the law. The obedience is what we should do and the warning is the warning if we don't obey. So both are the law. Obedience and warning are the law. And the grace is, uh, is grace and is blessings of God. Revelation 21.8 But the cowardly, unbelieving, abomin abominable, Murderer, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So all those who are not believing, even though they might believe at one time, but they don't continue to believe in Jesus, trust in Jesus as a Savior, and then they shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. So they will go to hell forever. So that is the warning. Now, as I said before, the main motivation should come from God's grace. And then secondary motivation come from the law that we tell them what to do and also the warning. So if people disobey, then there is the warning 
and uh, so that uh, that to tell people that if they don't uh, follow God, if they don't trust in Jesus as a Savior, there is a warning that they can ha they might not have eternal life. Okay, and then have a close relationship with God, the third fruit. So when we motivate people, if we have a message to motivate people to pray to God, to read the Bible, to respond to the voice of God in our hearts, then this is one verse, John 15, 5. I'm the vine. Okay, I've been, uh, I've been talking about uh, the fruit of salvation and how to motivate people with God's grace and then uh, because I just turned on Pastor Yip there uh, in the other channel so we talk about that the fruit of salvation first related to salvation are continue repent of our sins and continue trust in Jesus as our Savior and Master and then related to relationship with God that we have a close relationship with God and love God and related to good works to obey God and to serve God so in most of our teachings, we should be telling people to follow this. this. So all the Christian good works should fall into these six areas. These six areas are the areas of our good works. And so I'm showing you how to motivate people, how to, you know, when we preach to people, when we want to encourage them to repent, then we'll say the whole heaven will rejoice over you when you repent. And then you are accepted as the children of God. And then when you trust in Jesus as your Savior, then also God will uh, give you the right to become children of God. And then have a close relationship with God. When you have a close relationship with God, and then uh, when we pray to God, when we uh, respond to His uh, voice in our heart and read the Bible and meditate on the Bible and, and apply it to our life, then this uh, this is the promise. John 15, 5. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burnt. So here, I, again here in this passage, there is a grace, obedience, and warning. Okay? Grace is God's blessing uh, that when we trust in Jesus that He pours uh, these blessings into our life and obedience is what we're supposed to do and this is, uh, belongs to the law and warning also belongs to the law. Okay, I'm the vine, you are the branches. So, so this is grace, that He is the vine that we are connected to, that he, we are connected to Him. He is the source of life. He is the tree. And we are the branches. So the branches uh, is connected to the tree and depends on the tree, depend on the vine. And then you are the branches. Also, this is grace because God accepts us to be the branches in God's vine. That Jesus is the vine and we are connected to Him. So, so that is the grace of God, that we are connected to God and we are nourished by God, by Jesus. And he who abides in me, this is obedience. So when we, ab this obedience is what we do, okay? Grace is what God does for us to bless us. And obedience is what we do to follow God's commandments in the Bible. So he who abides in Jesus, and then Jesus will abide in him. And that is grace. So whenever we live in Jesus, he will live in us. That is a promise of God. When we live in him, he will live in us. That is a promise that we will not be alone. We will not be left behind. But when we trust in Jesus and abide in Jesus, He'll continue to live in us. That He'll ha continue to have this rela relationship with us. And He will bear much fruit. He will have much fruit. He'll, so this is also grace. That God will produce these fruits in His life. God will produce these fruits. For without me, you can do nothing. So this is warning. This is the warning that if we don't obey God, when we don't abide in Jesus, that we don't have a relationship with Him, then we can do nothing. So that is the warning. If we don't live in Jesus, 
we, we don't have a close relationship with Him. We don't pray to Him. We don't read the Bible. We don't meditate on the Bible. Then we are not with Jesus. Then we are without Jesus. Then we can do nothing. That is a warning. We can do nothing that uh, according to God's, uh, in God's kingdom. Now, we can do things in the world. We can uh, work in the world and earn money and cook food and eat food and build houses. We can do all this, but this is nothing in the kingdom of God. Uh, only when we have a relationship with God and obey Him that we are doing something uh, in God's way. And then if anyone does not abide in Jesus, that is a warning for those who don't abide in Jesus, he is cast out as a branch and is withered then he doesn't have Jesus. Jesus is here and we are not connected to him, then we'll dry up. Then we have no more spiritual life. Now people in the world, they might have the joy and the fun of the world, but they don't have the joy of the Lord. They don't have the life of God. And then they, their spiritual life will, be, will wither and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. So here they are burnt. It's this must be hell, you know, this, uh, that, that the person who, who is not in a relationship with God, that they will be in hell burning. So here it tells us that, these verses tell us that it's necessary. Now these six points are the necessary fruit of salvation. So when we motivate people to pray to God, to read the Bible, to respond to God's voice, we tell them, when we read the Bible and we pray, when we meditate on God's Word, then we are connected, then we are abiding in Jesus, that we are obeying. And God is very happy. He is divine and we are the branches and then He will live in us. And then when He lives in us, because He's the source of life, then He will bear, He will cause us to bear much fruit because His life will cause us to bear much fruit. His life will change us. So that is the grace of God. So we can motivate people. When you pray to God and you meditate on the Word of God, you meditate on God is love. And when we abide in Him, He will abide in us and then we'll bear much fruit. And then this will motivate us that when we abide in Him, He will live in us and He'll cause us to bear fruits. He'll cause us to have spirit, uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit and also fruit of uh, ministry of serving, uh, p serving God. And then without me, you can do nothing. And that's the warning. Now, if a Christian doesn't pray at all, he doesn't pray, he doesn't meditate on the Word of God, he doesn't hear God's Word, he doesn't go to church, then there is a danger that he doesn't have a living relationship with God. And then he is cut off and is thrown into the fire. Now, so according to the Bible, all these six points are necessary fruits of salvation, okay? It's very important. These six fruits are the necessary fruit of salvation. If a person doesn't have the fruit of repentance, then he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He continue, doesn't continue to trust in Jesus, then he's not a child of God. And then he will lose salvation. And then if he doesn't abide in Jesus, he doesn't have a close relationship with God, then he will be cut off and thrown into the fire so there is necessary to have a close relationship with God. But the motivation should mainly come from God's grace that when we live in Him, He is very happy and He will grow in us. I mean, He will cause us to grow in Him. He will change our spiritual life so that we'll grow. And then, uh, and then when we love God, then He's very pleased with us and He'll give us things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human heart cannot think of, so He will bless us. So we motivate people like this, but we also tell people that he who doesn't love the Lord, cursed is him. That uh, I'll show you the Bible verse later. So it tells us that it's necessary to love Him. But we should be mo mainly motivated by God's grace. When we love Him, He's very, very happy. He will, uh, he will bless us with blessings that we cannot imagine. Now, we should be motivated mainly by God's grace, not by the law, not by warning. And last time someone asked me, what if you tell them and then they don't obey? 
we can tell them the warning uh, that if you disobey, you are cut off and thrown into the fire. Do you want to go to the fire? Do you believe that God is in control of everything? Do you believe that God knows your heart? Do you believe these Bible verses that tell us that if we don't bear this fruit, then there are serious con consequences that, you know, that in each of these points, we show serious consequences. Now that is for the warning of people who disobey. But for Christians who obey and follow God, we motivate them mo mainly with the grace of God. You know, like I motivate myself and say, when I serve God, God is very happy. When I pray to Him, He is very happy and He'll bless me and so I can enjoy life, I can enjoy the relationship with God. So I mainly motivate myself with God's grace. So we can tell people, we, we can really see God's blessings. Now some people say, no, I don't see God's blessing. I experience many difficulties. Then I'll tell them, think of the, great, the peace of God the joy from the Lord, the strength from the Lord, and how God has provided for us. I know that in Africa, some of you might be, you know, uh, financially difficult. But when you trust in God, you find that God will continue to provide for you. Now, you might compare uh, yourself with the people in other parts of the world that they are richer, and then you say, those people have more money. But when you have uh, food to eat, then you thank God, say, I have food to eat, and I continue trusting God, and God will continue to bless me. So I hope that you all will follow God and have a close relationship with God and really obey Him and serve Him and see God's blessing pouring into your life. So I hope that you see, continue to see God's blessings pour into your life, and I hope that you tell me. So when you see God's blessing pour, into your life, tell me, and then I will, you know, uh, that will glorify God, and then we can tell other people. So these are the six er main areas of Christian living. Now, each of these points include many kinds of actions. So there are messages about praying, about praising God, about be thankful to God, about reading the Bible, about responding to the Bible, about listening to God's voice, and uh, responding to the voice of God and have a loving relationship with God and rely on God and enjoy God. All of these are related to this theme to have a close relationship with God. So each of these points, there can be many, many messages. For instance, uh, other examples of having, having a close relationship with God. So we can talk about the prayer life of the early church, the prayer life of, um, of Paul and Silas when they were in prison, that they were praising God. And then the ground was shaken, and then the, all the chains were loosened. So we can preach about those things, and also about how the early church has so much power, and they pray there was an, was an earthquake. And so... There are many different passages in the Bible that talk about close relationship of people with God, like Moses, Samuel, David, how David, uh, that he really enjoyed God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That one thing I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord. So all these Bible verses are related to close relationship with God. And then you motivate them with this blessings when we co come close to God. That, for instance, when David can enjoy God and say, one thing have I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord, that we can see his dissatisfaction in David's life. That he's satisfied with God's presence. Now you might say, I don't read that in the verse. So you have to think, you have to meditate on the verse and say, when David said, one thing have I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord. So what is happening in his heart? What is happening in his heart? He is, he is really pleased with God. He is happy with God. He desires God. And all this came from the work of God. Now, we must remember all the good works in our life comes from God. God works in our life to produce these effects. 
So we say, God, you're so wonderful. You, you know, that whoever comes close to you, they are blessed by you, like David and Moses. And when Moses went up to, the, to Mount Sinai and saw God there, and then he came down and his face was shining. And also Stephen in the early church, when he was persecuted, his face was also shining like an angel. So we see that when we live in the presence of God, we'll have the glory of God showing in our life. That our life will, will uh, show the presence of God. And that is uh, the grace to motivate people. When people, you know, you can see that some people really enjoy coming to God. And you can see their life. So we can talk about different people in the Bible who, who have a close relationship with God and how they're blessed by God. And actually, these people have a close relationship with God because God works in their life. God moves them to come close to God. And these people respond in obedience and come close to God. And then God pours the blessings upon him. So, uh, so this uh, point, have a close relationship with God, there are many, many passages in the Bible. Like Enoch in the Old Testament, he walked with God for 300 years. Now, he, you know, he was walking with God alone. He enjoyed the pres presence of God. Now, can you walk with God for a long time? Now, one time I went to the Philippines uh, on a mission trip. And then when I came back, and then they said, well, there's a change of the flight. And then you have to wait for 10 hours before the next connection. My response was, it's okay. I'll keep praying there. Instead of saying, oh, 10 hours, that's too much. I didn't say that. I just say, okay, it's okay. I'll pray to God. And so I spent a long time loving God. So because I see that when I come close to Him, He will come close to us and He will work in our life. Like when the group of Christians in my uh, meetings every Sunday afternoon in Hong Kong, when we pray together, the, the moment we start to pray, immediately I can sense the presence of God coming strong. As soon as I pray to God, as soon as the group gather together in a circle and we cry out to God, as, actually as soon as I say, let's pray, let's come to God, the moment I said that, I can feel the presence of God. I can feel the power of God coming upon us. I can feel His joy. I can feel His power. And I'm motivated. So I hope that we'll all learn that. And one, one way we can sense His presence is the swaying of the Holy Spirit. Now in uh, Revelation 1.17, the Bible says that when John saw Jesus, he fell to the ground. And then in uh the book of Acts chapter 9, when Saul, who was chasing, you know, uh, who was also called Paul, he was chasing after the Christians. And then on the way to Damascus, he saw Jesus and then he fell to the ground. So these verses tell us that in the presence of God, people can fall under the presence of God because God is powerful. Now, when God's power comes strong, then people will fall down. When the power is not so strong, like uh, when people start to pray, when the presence is not so strong, then people will feel the presence of God, the power of God, and they start to sway. And the moment when I start to pray, I feel this swaying of the body. Ah, <laughs> yeah. And then the joy will flow, and my, I feel my body swaying under the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So that brings peace to be comfort to me. That shows the presence of God. So these are ways that we can motivate people, that, that the presence of God can be sensed by our soul and our body, that we can sense the peace of God, the love of God, the, uh, and the, uh, the comfort of God, and the joy of the Lord. And also in the body, we can sense the power, we can sense the comfort of the body, and we can sense the sw uh, swaying of the body. So all this, and then we can have strength again. We'll, we'll be renewed with the strength of God. 
So all this will motivate people. Whatever God does to us to bless us will motivate people. That is the grace of God. Instead of saying, you have to pray, you have to read the Bible. Now we can say that. But don't say that all the time. Don't say that you have to pray, you have to read the Bible. Remember to read the Bible. But we'll tell them to motivate them. When, whenever you pray to God, God is very happy. And God will come to you and fill you up. And then He will give uh, power to you. He'll give joy and peace to you. And He'll give you the motivation to change your life and be changed in your life. So, so we can motivate people like that instead of just telling them what to do. Because in many of your assignments, I find that when you talk about grace, you just talk about salvation and forgiveness. It's not just forgiveness and salvation. God's grace is in all areas of our life. We can live because God gives us life. That is grace. God gives us strength. That is grace. God gives us food. That is grace. God gives us the Holy Spirit. That is grace. God changes our life with the Holy Spirit. That is grace. God moves us to come to God and then bless us with the presence of God. That is grace. And God turns us away from our sins. That is God's grace. And whenever we turn away from sin, He gives us the peace and the joy of the Lord again. And then when we still... When we are still in sin, God will work in the heart to tell us that we are sinning. Now, this is grace in the sense that He is telling us, drawing us back to Him and to obey Him. In a way, it's also the law that He is warning us. He is warning us if we disobey, then there will be serious consequences. So when we pay attention to the whole Bible and pay attention to what he does what He does to us whenever we obey Him, then we can tell people. Whenever we obey Him, then He'll bless us with His peace and joy and love and strength. And so I expect you in your assignment to talk about this grace to motivate people and also to motivate ourselves. I hope that you all say that when I come to God, God will come to me and He'll give me strength and joy and He'll bless me and I have strength to follow Him and obey Him, and He's very, very happy whenever I obey Him. Whenever I follow Him, He is very, very happy, and He'll continue to bless me and give me strength. So we can motivate people like that, and then whenever we obey Him, He'll reward us. Okay? Hallelujah. Now, if you have any question, you can send it uh, in the group, and then I'll answer. Okay? So I'm demonstrating to you in all areas of our Christian life that we can motivate people with God's grace. We should tell people what to do. That is obedience. But you don't need to tell them all the time because basically Christians know what to do. It's just they don't have the strength. So we tell them the grace of God to motivate them to do, to, to obey God. And then there is the warning, but it should not be warning all the time. You know, some people think that we have to warn the Christians all the time and tell them you know, dis if you disobey God will punish you and you lose the blessings of God and uh, all the warnings you know warnings doesn't really motivate people warning make people feel negative but the grace of God makes people feel positive and motivated and happy to follow God now we should warn people but I would say 1% of our teaching now for some people it could be 10% but for Christians who obey God, we don't have to warn them all the time. Even though we should warn them, but we, the main motivation should come from grace. When people hear God's grace all the time, then he'll be motivated to follow God and obey God. Okay. And then the fourth point is to love God with our, all our heart. 1 Corinthians 2.9 But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. 